Hey everybody, welcome back to today's Callus ADV Legends series. And I've got a legend among legends today. So legendary, in fact, that I bet a lot of my younger viewers have no clue who I'm talking about. I'm here with Danilo, Brazilian player. Thank you for being here. Really appreciate the time. Yeah, man. Uh, I appreciate I appreciate the opportunity. Uh, thanks. Um, yeah, let's let's do it. Could you? Because, like I said, I mean, you're old school. You're back at the same time, <laughs> time same time period as me. For the yeah. for the teenagers watching this who have no clue who you are, could you just give us a a brief introduction about yourself? Yeah. So <clears throat> I started playing competitive mods in like 2011. And then I think I started getting into advance, like maybe like midway through 2012. Um, I'm actually from the East Coast, um, but I ended up playing with uh, the Brazilians just because uh, my father is from Brazil. And, you know, back in the day, the Brazilians were just the illest at advance. So I wanted to connect with my people uh, over there. And, yeah, I don't know. I think I played from like, I played pretty competitively from like 2012 to like... I don't know. I feel like 2012 to like 2015 was when I was really serious. And then things kind of went downhill uh, once I started doing things in my life besides playing Pokemon. But uh, I think I like really, really, really stopped like around like 2017 or something. That was going to be life. one of my follow-up questions. Yeah. So is, yeah. That, is that the most recent time that you played remotely seriously? Something like that. There was like an SPL. A little before, a little before the pandemic, maybe like a year or two before the pandemic, that I tried to get in, and uh, I got bid on and I got bought. Uh, I was gonna play for a team, but I think I was banned on Smogon uh, for you know problems with authority, and I didn't end up playing that season, that 2018 or 2019 season. So I think around like 2017. I don't know exactly. People can dig up into the forums if if they still care so much, but yeah, it's been it's been a minute. I do have a vague recollection of that. And since then, <laughs> you haven't tried to appeal the ban or get back in action. Are you still banned? I don't know. Um, maybe. I don't know. I, doubt yeah, I don't it. know. I'm, I'm pretty disconnected from the from Smogon and from competitive Pokemon. Uh, but I still check. You know, I still talk, I still watch replays and stuff. But in terms of like the internal politics stuff, I'm not really. I'm not really too into that. Yeah, believe me, um, in the interviews I've done, I, I think I've heard that every single time so far. <laughs> that seems to be a pretty common grievance. Yeah. So what made you get into Pokemon in the first place? Take me all the way to the beginning. What was appealing to you about this hobby, about how old were you, and you're like, oh, this is a game that I want to try. And what made yeah. you lock down on Gen 3 as opposed to any of the other things that are available? Yeah, well, it's funny because uh, growing up, I didn't really have, like, my mom didn't let me have video games. So I, like, always had to, you know, go to a friend's place or something like that. And then by the time I got to, like, by the time I was, like, 14, um, which was, like, 2010 for me, um, I think I got, like, a Game Boy Advance SP, and I was playing Pokemon. I would play, you know, I was playing games on that. Um and eventually black white 2 came out or the first black and white came out and i started learning more about the competitive scene and i was like oh, you know i'm a competitive kind of person and um you know that just kind of i remember being on the zat chats back in the day i started oh, on zat. Way back. <laughs> yeah dude i was on zat uh, there's actually one guy i don't know he played a little bit i think he played a little bit of advance his name was jim bond in case any old heads know that guy but we were in the same zat back in the day um, and yeah, from, from the Zat chats and, you know, getting you know tired of Wi-Fi battling, I got into Smogon and just kind of went down the rabbit hole from there. I kind of just like, you know, I played, uh, I played black, white, OU and I liked that, but you know, eventually I was like, eh, let me explore some other tiers. So I started playing Ubers and I started playing Little Cup because I, oh, these, these Pokemon are a little cute. This is fine. This is cool. And I was playing, I was really into Little Cup for a while, black, white, Little Cup. Um, and then, I don't know, like, um, Gen 3 was, like, the first generation, like, I kind of got, like, uh, where it seemed like it was, Pokemon seemed really cool to me, like, I remember my friends had, like, Emerald and Ruby, 
and Sapphire, but I never, I didn't get to have, you know, I didn't get to have those games growing up. Um, so, and then, you know, so there was like a bit of a nostalgia factor for that particular generation, just because of my upbringing. And also, um, at the time when I was, you know, getting more serious into, into Pokemon and I was looking to play something besides Black, White, Little Cup, you know, Generation 3 was known as like, you know, you know, the illest generation, like, it was, you know, it was more more balanced. It was, you know, it was considered to be, you know, one of the more balanced generations, if not the most balanced generation. Uh, there was a lot of, you know, it, was a, it seemed like there was a lot of room for creativity. And also all the best players were playing in it. Um, and I was like, yo, man, that sounds pretty lit. So um, that w- that attracted me to it. And, and um, yeah, that's how, that's how I got into Gen 3. And I just, you know, it's mostly just stuck with Gen 3. So we'll talk later about some of the things that you went on to achieve. You had a pretty hefty career for someone who was only involved in the competitive scene for half a decade or so, whatever it was. But starting at the very beginning, what what are some of your favorite memories from the earliest days of you getting into the competitive scene? Yeah, uh, I remember really early on, I actually got a, I got into the, the Battling 101 program on Smogon. And uh, I was like, yeah, I need to work with my guy, Draco Malfoy, a.k.a. Tama. And I remember playing with him. And I remember the first game we played, <laughs> I used, like, uh, I forgot the team, but I had, like, a Substitute, Dragon Dance, Hidden Power Flying, Taunt, uh, Taunt Gyarados. And I remember I, like, 6-0'd him. And he was like, yo, like, don't think you're good because you won with this set. Because this set is super cheesy. He's like, the set is super cheesy, and you're going to lose to a lot of good people if you're running some bullshit like this. And I was like, you're 100% right. That was definitely something I remember a lot. Um, I remember playing a lot with uh, uh, Majin Tupac, the great German player. Uh, we play a lot of Pokemon online. Uh, this took a little bit of a while before you know, I was able to really play with him for real. But we used to play a bunch, and he was fucking really good, man. He was really good. And he would play really fast. I remember he would like we would just like challenge each other on Pokemon Online, and he would just be like, you know, he would be moving super fast. His teams were cool. Um, yeah. Um, I don't know. So many, so many cool memories. Like I remember, I remember uh, I resurrected Dexe uh, from the dead. He was Beas for Brutus. He was playing as Beas for Brutus on the ladder on Pokemon Online ladder. So yeah, you know, all people that enjoy Dexe, you guys can thank me. Shouts to me. Shouts to him too, but yeah, you know, shouts to me. Um, he was cool to play with. Um, I really used to play a lot with the German community. Um, um, outside of just Majin Tupac, they had a they had a server called Pokemon Experte. Um, I don't know. It was just like a lot of just yeah, a lot of those just like you know playing and building teams and you know bouncing off ideas and playing with a lot of those kinds of people um, it was super cool. I know it was a while ago. Do you do you happen to remember? I don't actually know the answer to this. Do you remember the first SPL that you played, or what team you got drafted by the first time? Yeah, it was. Um, I don't remember what SPL it was, but I think it was like 2012, 2013. I was playing on the Tigers. I got drafted by the Tigers as a sub. I was like one of the last picks in that um, uh, for the for the Tigers at that team. And they had Giga Punch playing Advance, um, but eventually I ended up playing Advance for the, for the rest of that season. And that's probably my favorite overall situation playing Pokemon that that particular uh, season for the Tigers. I would say that I mean SPL certainly because you were a staple for years and years. But I think probably what you're most known for in the competitive scene is being the very first winner of ADV Cup, which was a huge deal back in the day, because that was when ADV, like you said, prime generation, all the best players were super ADV focused. It it was the gen back then. It just was. And it's very hard to describe to people who play now because it's so far gone. But, I mean, that was a monumental achievement when you finally won ADV Cup. I mean, tell me everything that you remember about that. Who did you beat on your run what were some of the most memorable matches for you? What was your mindset going into that? Yeah, you know, the ADV Cup thing is funny because uh, I think that as, I think this like a lot of the time when I was doing good in Pokemon, it coincided with me just being like, you know, a high school kid with no life outside of you know playing Pokemon. Um, so 
I would spend all my time playing Pokemon and in class I would, you know, I was thinking about teams and I had a notebook and I was, you know, thinking about this, this and that. Um, and I would go home and I would play a bunch and I would test and I would play in tournaments. And then by the time ADV Cup came around, um, I think I was in college at this point and I was starting to develop other interests and uh, deeper, <laughs> deeper friendships with people outside of my computer screen. Shouts to all my homies on the computer screen. Um, not to diminish, but um, I said all that to say was that I had like a really bad SPL season. I forget which team I was playing on, but I went like two and seven, like something extremely bad. And then um, but I was still like, you know, I was still trying to play advanced. I was still trying to make it work um, despite, you know, limited time or investing limited time. Um, but that was how I was going into the season, you know, and I was a bit excited because like ADV Cup was like the first like best of three, uh, best of three uh, advanced tournament, um, like SPL and the Smogon tours, like the the live tours were all like best of ones. Um, so I was looking forward to it. Um, the tournament itself, it was a little janky. Uh, well, it's hard to remember everything, but I remember I had to beat a lot of really good players. Um, like I beat BKC. Pretty sure I played Jabba. Pretty sure I played Malekith. Uh, I beat I beat New Breed. I uh, was having a really good year that year in like the semis, and then I beat Ojama. I did get like one kind of like late game by in like the like the quarters I think versus Vince two six one two, who was just like a good all around player. Uh, who definitely could have who definitely could have beaten me. I don't know why he dropped out, but um, who was your yeah. finals opponent? Was it Ojama? Yeah, my finals was Ojama. So you know, shout out to Ojama because uh, at this point, by the time I got to like the semis, I think by the time I got to the semis, I was like working as a uh, as a camp counselor at a sleepaway camp, um, and you know, I didn't have I pretty much didn't have any. I had like my laptop. Actually, I don't even know if I had my laptop. I might have had someone else's laptop. I forget, but I, I could only play on like you know on off nights, which would be like an off night would be like every other night. I could like go to the the lounge where the other counselors hung out, and I could like try to boot up and try to schedule my matches. And this was the only time I could play. So I think for New Breed it wasn't as big a deal because he was on the East Coast, I believe. But for Ajama, he couldn't play until mad late because uh, he's French. He's in France, so I think we played like past midnight his time. Um, and I was playing at like, you know, maybe like 10 a.m. or not 10 a.m., 10 p.m. East Coast time. Um, well, it was 10 p.m. East. I mean, because there's six hours ahead, dude. That would have been four in the morning in France. Oh, damn. Yeah, I don't know if it was that late, but it was, it was definitely between like two. It was definitely between like one and three. It was definitely late as heck. I might have tried to leave early, but I definitely, it definitely was not good conditions for him. Um, and yeah, I mean, I wasn't like practicing. Because I was like working at a summer camp, um, but I had some teams loaded up, some tried and true teams, um, and yeah, the games. I don't know. I, I remember using like the same team. I used the. I was using like a. My favorite team at that time was like a. It was Tyranitar. I think it was like a mixed Tyranitar. It was uh, like an HP Bug Fortress. It was an Aerodactyl. It was a Swamper. A Blissey. And the Celebi, that was the team I was running at that time. That was my my favorite team to use at that time. Uh, and I used that team twice. I lost uh, I lost game one with a team that Malfoy gave me. That was really good. I think I had some like, I think I had like, I don't know. I think there was some like RNG in the first game that kind of uh, helped him helped Ojama out. I think it was like a it was like a light screen, rest talk, uh, Zapdos, uh, Skarmory, Doug Trio. Jirachi, um, and like another Pokemon or two, I can't remember. And then I think game one, I kind of, and getting, so I lost game one. Game two, I kind of won cleanly. And like game three, I think he needed like a, he had like a rock slide that either could have finished or could have uh, flinched my fortress. And uh, it missed, and I got some rapid spins off. And then the game kind of, uh, you know, went in my favor from there. Um, but yeah, that was fucking lit. It was, it was definitely, it was, you know, it was cool to win that tournament. Um, and I guess it was a big deal. I don't know. <laughs> I'll take, I'll take people's words for it. I mean, it felt like a good big deal for me because it was like the first like individual tournament I won. But 
for me, the for me, my first for me, the the big thing for me was always that first SPL season where I was like a, a sub for the Tigers, and you know I was like a I was like a super rookie, and you know the best players at the time, a lot of the best players in general were playing advanced. Like I was like, you know, it was, it was like McMegan, Malfoy, uh, Crash and Boombang was big in advanced back then. Um, a bunch of other really good players, uh, M Dragon, of course, and I ended up going like seven four in that season. I won like you know, uh, and I was building all my own teams. You know, a lot of people, a lot of people don't build their teams, and it it, it disgusts me. So I was building, I was building my own teams. You know, uh, my well, teams were swag. It's, it's, more <laughs> impressive. it's more impressive because back then replays are, were not what they are today. It's so easy now for anyone yeah, to just yeah. load up a replay and be, oh, I'll just copy the six. I know almost all the moves. Easy, yeah. easy copy paste. But back then, and this is inconceivable to some of our younger listeners, but like you were, <laughs> we, we were playing with logs back then, not even replays. Like I don't even, your ADV cup win, I don't even think there's a replay of that, right? Because this is before the modern replay. No, I think there's, a, I think there's, a, there's a replays of that. That was like just, that was like, yeah, that was just in the transition period as uh, as showdown became bigger. But like those first two SPLs, those were all, you know, those were all text. That was all text. Re- that was all text stuff. Yeah. Text logs back in the day. I remember those. Scouting is not what it once was. Yeah, man. Scouting was definitely, yeah. I mean, outside of just like having like, you know, um. You know, outside of just like you know, growing up and focusing less on Pokemon, there's definitely a couple of like cultural, uh, cultural things, cultural shifts that got me less interested in Pokemon. And scouting was like one of them. Like just like, you know, people being down to just like uh, build bullshit teams, but you know, uh, you know, a team that's designed yeah. just to beat you rather than just like build a good team, a team that has no purpose other than to cheese you. Yeah, like people would focus more on like, you know, scouting. People would focus more on, you know, building counters to, you know, a couple of teams that they may have seen you use instead of like, you know, putting effort into a team that's gonna be good for, you know, six months to two years, you know. And that was just like something that I just felt like that was like one of those things I was like, yo man, I I'm I'm gonna have to move out. Um, forgot how I got to this point, but yeah, I was building teams. Building teams is cool. Um, yeah. So you discussed already some of the really good players that were playing ADV at that time, but I mean, you were an SPL ADV staple for half a decade, playing at a time like you said when it was BKC, Asta, Undisputed, Ojama, M Dragon, Roro, Dexa, those kind of guys, some of the all-time greats. Back then. Who did you most like to play against among those top guys, and why? And then, of course, on the flip side, who did you least like to play against among those top guys, and why? Well, um, it's hard to pick like people in uh, in particular, outside of like Majin, who was like my favorite player to play overall, even though we didn't ever play in tournament. But I'll just speak generally. Like my favorite players to play were like the really good, pl- like people who like both like had a really good. Had like a really good game, but also brought like you know some sort of cool teams. Um, um, I guess yeah. I'm you know, I'm thinking about like the first things that come come to my mind are like Dexa, M Dragon, um, Tama, Ojama, McMegan. Like all those players, in my opinion, were like you know better, better, you know more skilled battlers than me. But they didn't just like coast on that. Like they actually built like really cool, really good teams. I forget if I ever played Asta in tournament too, but I actually really enjoyed playing him, um, uh, him as well. And the people I didn't enjoy playing were like, you know, people who were good, but just like didn't bring like the most boring fucking teams. I'm like, yo, dude, we're playing fucking Gen three, man. Like, can you build something that you know we haven't seen since like the IPL days? Like, for me, that was just like that was like another big thing, just like playing Gen three. It's like there's so much room for experimentation uh, in this in this meta game. And it's like you know. Also, like you know, I'll, you know, outside of just like entertaining myself and trying to be creative, it's also about like, you know, I enjoyed the spectator aspect of it as well. And I'm like, you know, I wanted to, you know, I wanted to be known as someone who, you know, built something, who brought new things to the, brought new things to the table, and that were still that were still really good. 
Um, so yeah, I didn't enjoy playing people who just like, you know, copied and pasted, uh, you know, someone else's teams or people who didn't build teams in general or people who just built like boring ass teams that were like good, but it's like, like, I don't know. It was always more, it was about, it was always about more than just the W for me. Like the W was definitely primary, but like, you know, there's more, there's, yeah, there's, there's more than just the W, you know, especially like, you know, I mean, we don't play for anything in, in this environment besides like the respect and besides like, you know, enjoying, you know, different aspects that we find beautiful about the game. And, you know, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's, you know, it's subjective, obviously. Um, what what I what I think is cool might not be what other people are think are uh, think is cool, and there's not like uh, an inherent you know an inherent hierarchy of like you know you know what people should be playing for, but that's not going to stop me from talking shit about people who were lame. Y'all know who you are. So while we're here, since you said you wanted credit as a builder and you wanted to be acknowledged <laughs> for acknowledged for your innovations, acknowledged for the things that you did differently. I mean, hey, let's get it. On, let's get it on the damn recording. Are there any sets or teams that you want to stake your claim for? I did this first. That was my invention. Absolutely. I mean, there's a long list. There's a long list. I'm not gonna lie. Let's hear a couple. I remember, of them. Um, well, then I have to start with number one, and it's only because it hurts my soul every time this set is not attributed to me, and it's Astarachi. I was using Astarachi at least a year before. Asta came back to uh, came back to competing in Gen three at least a year. It was Neil Arachi, and I feel like it was just like a, I feel like it was like a, like I was declining in relevance and he was becoming like a really really good player again. Um, but that shit hurt. That hurt hurts my soul every time I see Asta Rachi. I'm like, no, it was me. And I remember the first time I was using it, it was like um, it was like a rest. It was like an offensive Sandstorm team. It was like. It was like offensive rest, rest hog Zapdos, um, Aerodactyl, Tyranitar, Swampert, Jirachi, and some sort of Mence. I think originally it was like Dragon Dance Mence. And I was like, yo, I need something that can, um, you know, I need something that can uh, um, take lightning bolts. I need something that can, you know, Give a, I need something that can give a timeout to uh, that can give a timeout to uh, Suicune, um, in case you know Zapdos is weak. I need something that can soft check um, Gengar. I need something that you know, if other things get paralyzed, Mence and Tyranitar and Aerodactyl can deal with. And that was one of those things where that was one of those sets where I kind of got it from like looking at. Other meta games like um, like that set at the time was you know the standard set in Gen three Ubers, and I was like okay word like this works this seems like it'll work well on on uh you know on this team I'm working on, and boom, it did. Another set that um, my favorite team my favorite team that I spammed way too much, but I was. You know, by the time I was spamming it way too much, I was just like not playing as much. Was a uh, was a team that had uh, it was like a mixed Tyranitar, um, Skarmory, Swampert, Blissey, Dugtrio, and Fortress. Um, and this was an idea. The double uh, steal. I can attest yeah. to this one. I know that you were first on the first on board for that one. I yeah, remember, I remember this team very well known back at that time. Yeah, and that team was. Uh, I mean, I got the I got the double the double spiker idea. I think from like an old Vertigo team, because Vertigo, you know, German Pokemon German Pokemon player who built zillions of teams, and I would look at a lot of his teams. Um, he had like a team with like, I think it was like Cloyster and Skarmory. I was like, okay, let me think about doing some sort of double uh, double spiker team, and I ended up using. I ended up looking at the Uber's meta game. And I was using Hidden Power Fire. Uh, I was using Hidden Power Fire Fortress, which is you know common um, in the Uber's meta game at the time. And it was basically just as like a way to like one. I want to have a. I need a. Uh, I need something to beat. Um, what's it called? I need something to beat other Fortress, like other Tyranitar, Blissey, Fortress type teams. Um, I need that. 
And then, you know, having both Fortress and Skarmory was, like, really good against um, the Magneton physical offense teams. And then, um, I mean, I don't want to go too much into that team, but I'm taking credit for Hidden Power Fire Fortress. I'm taking credit for Neil Arachi. I'm taking credit for lead, lead Spikes, uh, lead spikes, Smeargle with, like, Spore, um, Select Berry, and other moves. I forget what other moves I used. This is, like, eight years ago. So I'm taking credit for that. I'm taking credit for Camerupt. Uh, I used that in my first SPL. No one else was using that. And um, I think, uh, yeah, these are the ones that come to mind. So some of that stuff is, is pretty wild. Could you... Could you walk us through your general preparation process? I mean, I don't, I don't know how one goes, hey, you know what, this game, haven't scouted, I'm going to bring camera up. I mean, did you even care what you thought that your opponent was going to bring, or did you just kind of build what you wanted to build and take your chances? I mean, it's definitely both. Like, you know, team matchup is a thing. Like, no matter what kind of team you have, even if it's really good, it's still going to have, like, weaker matchups. Like, <laughs> Like I remember uh, the team I the team I just described the Tyranitar Fortress Skarmory team, um, I brought it to a game versus you know the legend Halloween Brazilian deck building master. Uh, I brought it to him I think in my I guess my in my second SPL. And I thought I had a really good matchup versus versus most teams, but he ended up having like uh, I forgot exactly what his team was, but it was uniquely very good against my team, um, and you know shit like that happens you know. There's shit that you don't account for, but you know, when I was making like these kind of sets, it was always just to address like, you know, uh, when I, or when I was making these kinds of uh, yeah, when I was making these kind of sets, it was always just to address like a fundamental, a fundamental problem in a team. Like I didn't start off using like I didn't start off the team with the with Nilo Rachi or with Cameron. It was like my team needs a way to answer certain types of things and. I would go through the Pokemon, you know, the Pokédex, and see, you know, see what would, uh, see what options were available, and you know, and uh, at some point I just came to the conclusion that, you know, in those in, for that particular team, uh, it would make sense to use uh, that particular set. Um, yeah, usually, yeah, for those particular instances, it was like solving a practical problem. It wasn't like I'm trying to be cheeky and I'm gonna use uh, I'm going to use this obscure thing for cool points. I did get cool points, but that wasn't, like, the point. So in your own evaluation, I mean, it's it's both for everybody, but where do you think you fell on the, the spectrum of I'm going to build just a good team, period, versus I'm going to build a team to beat my opponent? I mean, again, it's it's always both. There's a balance, but which way did you lean more towards do you think in your own preparation i mean my first thing i mean no i mean for me my opponent is like less of a specific thing and more of like a general thing like my opponent like if i'm gonna go play callus i'm not thinking about i'm not necessarily just thinking about like who callus is and what he tends to bring like because i want a team that is going to stand the test of time you know um um well the camera up alone could beat me but against somebody good <laughs> I mean, yeah, I wasn't thinking. I wasn't. I wasn't thinking so much about you know, if I'm like going up against like an or something. I'm like, I'm not like building a team specifically for him. I'm like, uh, you know, I'm building. Uh, I'm building a you know a really good team that I want to be able to use versus him and also, you know, versus someone else later on. Like, that's that was never really, you know. That's also just like my like the like my little friend group at this time. Like, we all just thought that was corny. Like that was something like. Me and BKC would talk about all the time, you know. It's like that was just like that was just like a cultural no-no. And that's like again back to like, you know, what exactly are you playing for? It's like you know, if you want to play and you want to build corny teams, like that's fine, and you're gonna get the win, and like that's cool. But we know that you did something corny, and you know, I'm not trying to play corny. I'd rather play bad than play corny, to be honest, or build something corny. So you said that you still to some degree follow it today and watch replays and such yeah being an older player i mean how, how do you how do you perceive the way that the metagame and the culture have changed between back when you were playing a lot versus today that's a good question um i mean i'm definitely way less involved 
So it's hard to speak as much to the culture outside of just like, you know, what I remember. Um, I mean, I've spoken a lot about scouting. I feel like that was something that was coming into play as I was uh, getting ready to take a break. And I'm sure it's, you know, a lot more serious now. Um, so that was something I was like, eh. I remember, I mean, honestly, I think it was a really big deal when we, uh, when the, when the rest talk discoveries were made. Um, that was something that, like, that's something that really hurt my heart, actually. Because I was like a, I mean, I don't know, I don't see, like, I'm like a, I like to play stall. Or I like it when stall is, like, available. And I like to have a couple of, like, you know, nice stall teams. I just kind of enjoy that pace of play. Um, even if I don't necessarily, even if I don't really think it's, like, the ulti- like the, the like the most optimal thing to do. I think kind of think that, like, some sort of, like, I, f- I tend to think that offensive teams in this meta are better or in advance are better. Uh, but, you know, just, like, in terms of, like, my personality and the pace of play, I kind of always like stall teams. And I feel like when I, you know, when I take a look at replays, I don't really see as much stall. I see, like, more... I, I kind of see, like, more, like, more balanced, more mid rangey type of teams, which were kind of becoming more popular, um, like, in the last year or two when I started playing. Like, I remember there was a... There's a popular... Uh, Earthworm team, comes to Earthworm. It was like um, that. Felt like kind of was uh, kind of like uh, indicative of the shape of how things were going. Um, not necessarily in the sets, but just like kind of in like the temperament where it was like it was like Vaporeon, it was like CB Mens. I think it was like um, Claydol, uh, Lax. Um, and some other Pokemon that I don't remember because this is a while ago. But, and you know, I think those kinds of teams are cool too. Um, but it seems like, you know, I kind of just like the the extremes more of uh, the stall stuff and the offense stuff. And it seems like, I think, you know, the rest talk changes definitely uh, played uh, a big deal in, in shifting the metagame more in that direction. Um those are the main. Those are the yeah. When I, when, yeah, when I look at stuff now, and I don't you know, I don't look too. I don't. I can't say I look super duper hard now, but those are the those are kind of uh, the things that I notice. Would you say that it's more difficult to stall effectively now than it was in your era? I mean, I it seems like it. I mean, I didn't play. I didn't play seriously for too much longer after uh, the sleep talk changes, but. Um, it definitely was at that point. It was definitely a big hit. Like not being, you know, rest talk Zapdos, you know, not being as as good is like a really, really, really big deal. Not even just for sleep talk. Not even just for like salt teams, but also just like you know, an offensive rest talk Zapdos on an aggro team. Um, or it's just like even like you know more niche stuff like rest talk Reggie Ice. Like it wasn't like a, an amazing set. Um, but it had its niche on certain teams, um, and yeah, you know, yeah, losing losing that aspect of uh, of the meta game seems like seems like uh, it dealt, it did some damage. But yeah, that's that's my uh, that's my assessment, my uh, my uh, out of take or out of touch assessment. Now, what do you think? Do you think that sounds about right? Oh yeah, I think stall got way worse with the rest talk changes. I I think it massively and permanently changed the metagame. I felt like it was very common when we were playing for games to go over 100 turns. Felt like that was... We'd play yeah. 10, 10 games, three or four of them would be like that, and I don't feel like that's the case today. Yeah. I mean, I was, I was one of those things where I was like, man, we should just like pretend like we did not discover this and keep playing our fantasy game. <laughs> but, so so you, you touched on it a little bit earlier, but what is it that ultimately made you step away? Because, I mean, you, you didn't even, like, play less. You don't play at all, basically, anymore. What is it that made you retire and say, you know, I'm done with this hobby, I'm done with this game, going to move on? I mean, you know, just, like, spending I everything, mean, you know. Uh, I mean, just putting a lot more effort into other interests in my life. Um, I guess that's, like, yeah. Yeah, that's pretty much it. And also just like uh like in school, like um 
you know, I was like, you know, I wasn't like a, a loser in like school, but I didn't like hang out with people a ton after school, really. So like um, having that kind of social uh, community uh, after school was, you know, it was really, it was really awesome. Um, but then, you know, especially like, you know, as I got into college and like, you're just kind of hanging out with people all the time and you're, you're, you're developing interests more in person with, with other people and you're going around doing stuff like that. Um, it just made less time for Pokemon and, you know, my results got worse and, you know, I'm a, I'm a competitive person and it's just like, you know, I can try to, you know, be a master of time management while I'm doing, you know, a bunch of other things that I find more interesting. Or I can just, like, be like, eh, it's, you know, it's time to step back from this and, uh, uh, you know, focus on other aspects of, uh, of my life. And that's just kind of, that's just kind of what happens. Um, also, man, I play, actually, I played, a, I played an advanced game yesterday just for fun on the ladder. Just to see if I had any teams on uh on, on showdown. And I was playing someone and like it was going pretty well and I needed to hit a le- a leech seed versus a, a boosted Snorlax and I would have stabilized and it missed. And I was like, Yeah man, I'm not playing this fucking game. Like what the fuck? <laughs> I missed my leech seed, bro. First game I played in how long? I'm out of here, bro. So yeah, definitely like also, you know, there's only there's only so much I mean, I mean, I don't know. At least for me, there's only so much RNG uh, a man can take. Although I feel like now I, I'd be, I'd have a lot more healthy. I have, I'd have a lot, uh, I'd have a lot healthier in approach to that kind of stuff. But you know, I play other, you know, I play other games now too. Well, I only play one other game now too, and you know, outside, even outside of just like gaming, I have you know a lot of other shit. Um, you know, I put my effort into. But you know, you never know. I still want to play this. You know, the one meta I kind of, I'm kind of interested in. Is like Gen three Ubers. Uh, there used to be a ladder on Showdown for Gen three Ubers, and I would, you know, I would queue for fifteen minutes to find a Gen three Ubers match every now and then. Um, um, but yeah, that's yeah, that's kind of yeah. It was like, you know, yeah. It was it was it was also tough to walk away too because uh, you know I haven't been as as touch or as in touch with a lot of my uh, my Pokemon homies from back in the day. So you know, it wasn't like something that I took lightly necessarily, but. Just uh, the move aligned more with the uh, the new direction that I wanted to take my life in. But Pokemon's still cool. Gen three is still cool. I still like uh, you know seeing what's going on, seeing that people are bringing cool stuff and yada yada. You know, a lot of my listeners aren't going to know this, but um, we were we were damn close. I don't remember exactly what CI it was, but years and years after you retired, CI five maybe. For months and yeah. months, you were telling me you're gonna play, you're gonna play, you're gonna play, and then finally, when it came down to it, you said you were out. But we were damn close to bringing you back and getting you in Callus Invitational, which kind of feeds into the the next question. I mean, maybe maybe the answer is nothing, nothing realistic anyway. But ultimately, what what would it take hypothetically to get you to get back in the game on more than just a a hop on ladder once and once a year basis to, to take it seriously, to put time and effort in, what would it take? I mean, it would take me having a lot more leisure time in my life. So nothing, nothing Pokemon related. I would just need, I would need a lot more leisure time, which would entail, um, you know, being more in cruise control and uh, having achieved some other things that I'm trying to achieve uh, you know, and other aspects of my life right now where I felt like, okay, excuse me, things are going pretty good. Maybe I want to think about playing Pokemon again, but I don't know. Don't see it happening anytime soon, to be honest. But, you know, people are still playing. Like, I checked Mogan, like, yesterday. I'm like, damn, motherfuckers are still playing. Like, Solon's still playing. Like, Megan is still playing. Like, there's so many, a lot of people that, you know, I was playing with, like, 10 years ago that are still at it. So, it doesn't seem like they're going to stop playing it, so... You know, I'll, you know, there's, there's still a chance. You know, I would, you know, I, I definitely see, I can definitely see something like that happening. Uh, but, but, uh, uh, not anytime soon. Also, just like, I don't know, man, Pokemon, it's tough, man. It's tough. So, it'll, you know, it'll fuck up, it'll fuck up your brain just like getting deep into any sort of competitive thing. Um, so you gotta, you know, you gotta, you gotta make sure that, 
uh, your mind is right and your situation is right because you know I'm not just in high school anymore. I'm not trying to just like, uh, you know, put so much time and emotion into something where I don't feel like it's gonna be like a healthy relationship. Because like in high school, it's like you know it's chill to have like an unhealthy relationship with gaming, but you know I'm not really trying to do that right now. As a hypothetical, if if Pokemon ever went down the route of like an eSport, if there was something more than pixels to win, if you could actually win cash, meaningful cash, I'm not talking about a hundred bucks, playing this game, would that do anything for you? Would that in any way pull you back into the scene? Honestly, probably not. I mean, just because like the cash would be going to these crazy generations, like with the Megas and the this and the that, like you know these you know these team matchup as generations. Like I don't know if it somehow went to Gen three. Maybe, but I don't know. It's just like, I don't know. The chance would go from like zero to like maybe like 15. So not, 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 not really. Like, yeah, I don't know. I don't, I don't supersede it. So getting near the later part of the interview here, the big question, the one that I'm going to ask every single person that I interview for this series is a hard question, but could you please, first of all, define your personal criteria as to what constitutes the greatest ADV year of all time? Because everyone has a different definition as to what that means and what's important. And then once you do define the criteria, the hard question, of course, who is it? Who's the best ADV year to ever do it as far as you're concerned? Yeah, I mean, for me, it's got to be someone who... Um... They well, they have to have like the competitive achievements. They gotta, they gotta, you know, have good records and tournament wins and stuff like that. And they have to, they have to advance the meta game in some way. Like they have to, yeah, they have to advance the meta game in some way. Um, whether that's a particular team, particular, particular sets, whatever. But that has to be a part of it. It can't just be for me. Like greatness is like in this kind of thing. It's like you have to bring some sort of beauty to the game. Um, outside of just playing well, which is cool in and of itself, but you know, for me, I want more. In terms of the greatest AD viewer of all time, it's a good question. I mean, again, for me, uh, it's tough because I'm not as tapped in to what's been going on the last like you know seven, six years. But I don't know. I gotta go old school. I gotta go with Majin, dude. Even though he didn't play very long or. Uh, I never got to compete against him, but like the dude was just really, really good. And he had like he had like one the one SPL season he played, and he went like eight one. Um, and uh, he he was just I don't know. He for me he for me personally he's like the pinnacle of like someone who's like really good. Uh, built you know played cool teams, and you know wasn't like on some like. BS scouting type stuff, like just solid, good player. So I'm gonna go with my guy Majin. I'm gonna give an honorable mention to my guy, uh, to my sensei Draco Malfoy, aka Tama, because um, when I first got into advance, he was like, you know, he was like, you know, one of the top dogs, and he was building, and he was he was building really, really cool, really, really good teams uh, that were definitely shaping the meta. Um, and yeah, I'm gonna go with him. Gotta go with my sensei. So, I mean, you just expressed that you are not likely to return anytime soon, but <laughs> in, in the world outside of Pokemon, the more important world, what does the future hold for you? What are the goals? What are the dreams? Where Where are you trying to go with this whole thing? Oh man, oh man, I mean. The, with the whole life thing? I mean, I mean, within what you're comfortable sharing, of course. Yeah, I mean... No, nah, I'm gonna keep that mysterious. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna keep that under wraps, but if my homies have any questions, they can hit me up, but, you know, I'm not, I'm not one to just make that available for the whole... for the lovely callous audience, but, uh... But right now but, you're um, focused on personal and career goals rather than gaming as a general statement. Yeah, yeah. Although I do be, I, I do be gaming. I do play Super Smash Brothers Melee. Um, Competitively, yeah, yeah. I think you've mentioned that to me actually. 
Yeah, so I've been I've been getting back into melee. Um, I definitely put that's definitely the game that I put uh, my energy into post Pokemon. Um, is that your main game these days? If there is a main game, I don't play any other games. Like when I was playing Pokemon, I was only playing Pokemon, and I play Magic the Gathering at, at Friday Night Magic. But I'm the kind of person where like I can only really have like one thing that I, like within like within like a field. Uh, so this field is gaming. Within the field of gaming, I'm only going to play one game, uh, and I'll devote my time to that. And then, you know, with, within other aspects of life, I'll devote my time to those other things. Or, you know, I'll, I'll devote my singular focus to one other thing within that field. Um, but yeah, within gaming, I just play Melee. And, uh, and who's, your main, who's your main in Melee? Uh, I play Fox and Sheik. Yeah, so that's a tournament player right there. Two top-tier characters, <laughs> of course. Yeah. So before we wrap it up, is there anything else you'd like to say to my listening audience? So listening audience, well, tell me a little bit about your listening audience, real quick, because you know, I, I don't know, I don't know how much the the listening audience knows, but Callus has been a you know a staple, you know, one of the most important people in the history Jeez. of events for like the last twelve years now. You know, this guy's been uploading battles. Yeah, what a, what a, also kind of like, I mean, I, one of the more OG Pokemon YouTubers in general, to be honest, you got to have like at least like 10 years in the game now. Uh, so tell me, yeah, just catch me up real quick on like what the, what this community is like right now. I mean, this is such a niche hobby that I think my, my audience is still pretty small. I mean, granted, deleting my YouTube channel twice probably didn't, help, <laughs> probably didn't help the cause, but uh I mean, I've never done this to make money or go viral or whatever. There's a million better things you could do on YouTube or even in Pokemon. You got to upload current gen or whatever. It's never been about money for me. I just, uh, I'm, I'm about to turn 35 and I'm still playing this fucking game, man. It, <laughs> it's like you said, Soulwind's still around, McMagan's still around. I don't know what it is with some of us old heads that are still doing this, but it's, it's a passion project, not a profit project. <laughs> yeah. I mean, what keeps you, well... I'm still gonna ask you about your audience, but what keeps you with uh, what keeps you involved in Gen Three? Like you don't play other meta games, do you? Uh, it's the Callus interview right now. I'm interviewing I mean, I mean, I don't really play at all to be uh, Gen Three or otherwise, but word. Yeah, I mean, I've dabbled. I know how to play Gen Two. I know how to play Gen Four. I'm not good at them, but uh, yeah, Gen Three is just. Uh, I guess when I was at the right age, because I mean, I've played Pokemon since the beginning. I played since when Red and Blue came out. I was like eight, was in third grade at the time. But I guess being a teenager and like thinking that I'm smart and thinking that I'm get it is like right about. And like you said, all the good players were playing when I started. It was just right circumstances, right time, I guess. But yeah, there's no good reason. I I'm sure there are other good gens out there. But now I'm in the same boat as you. I'm just too old not enough free time i wouldn't it's overwhelming to me the thought of trying to learn gen 9 <laughs> right now from the ground up i mean do you feel the same way like if you had to gen 9 bro we're on gen 9 right now? <laughs> oh this shit is crazy i this hope, you're, I hope you're joking i assume that was a joke <laughs> i'm definitely not joking that's how i was is it really gen 9 yeah what gen did you think we were on <laughs> I don't know. I thought it would be on like Gen Seven or Gen Eight. Oh Actually, no. I think I, no, I think I stopped like Gen Six. So I guess Gen Eight, Gen Nine. That makes sense. I'm like, I'm looking at my lamp right now. I'm like, yo, these Pokemon's probably looking like lamps. I'm looking like my air conditioner right now. I'm like, yo, how are these people making this shit? But you I'm sure they got scald right now. They got instead of scald, it's like, you know, it's instead of eighty, instead of uh, eighty damage and uh, thirty percent chance to wall burn, it's probably like hundred damage, forty five percent chance to burn, ten percent chance to poison. I'm sure the power creep is crazy. But you know what I'm saying, yeah. right? Like, if Gen 10 came out tomorrow and everybody was starting from scratch and now there's whatever, there's a thousand Mons and all these new mechanics and there's Mega Evolutions and there's Z-Moves and all this other stuff, Dynamax, Gen 8. If you really had to learn that right now, today, I mean, daunting, right? Like, where do you begin when you haven't come anywhere near that in so many years? I mean, I definitely, that's not a question I have to answer because I would never do that. Right, same. That's where I'm at. 
<laughs> but once again, I need you to t- tell me about what's going on with your community nowadays. Like, what's you know, who are the people that are watching the Cal's videos? And then I'll and I'll and I'll end with uh, giving my my words for the for the Cal's community. Uh, well, I think I probably have about three viewers, and we'll go. Who are they? You can name them. There's three of them. <laughs> Maybe there's five. No, I, I, I really don't know. I don't ever really look at the analytics. My videos only get a couple hundred views, but I certainly yeah. appreciate my my loyal audience throughout the years. I These days I'm making, I'm hosting a draft tournament as opposed to focusing on OU, but I, I consider myself by and large retired. I'm just kind of making videos at my own, my own pace, my own leisure, trying to keep it entertaining but for me i'm at a point in life where my happiness matters more than anything and where i know where my priorities lie so the second this isn't fun for me anymore or i need a break i'm just gonna take one hear that um in terms of things that i'll leave for uh the burgeoning callous narrates youtube audience um number one thing is build your build your own teams you know, I think it's the for me that was always the coolest part of Pokemon, the, the creativity of trying to build your own teams. Let me follow uh, up on that actually. Do you think still today, I mean, twenty plus years after A D V came out, keeping in mind that the games originally came out in two thousand two in Japan, so twenty two years ago, do you think there's still room for innovation and creativity in A D V all this time later? Of course, yeah, there's definitely yeah, I mean yeah, there's definitely yeah, there's gotta be for sure, for sure, for sure, yeah, and uh, you know, and a lot of sometimes a lot of innovation is just like you know, you know, if you're someone who's trying to you know be a more serious team builder, like it doesn't necessarily have to be uh, a crazy set or a crazy mon. Sometimes it's just like you know, it can you know it can it can be like an EV tweak or something like that. It can be like a, a different hidden power. Um, it can be just like looking back at all the old teams and the ruins of Alf stuff and seeing if, you know, seeing if there's anything, any interesting ideas that you can take from, you know, teams that people were posting in like 2006 and apply them to 2024. Like, there's just like, this, you know, there's, there's a lot of, there's definitely a lot of untapped potential in this kind of generation. Um, and. So even though it's 22 years old, as far as you're concerned, it's not, quote, figured out or solved or anything along those lines there's still more to discover as far as you're concerned i mean i assume so i mean i'm not as involved but like you know for instance like i play melee um and melee came out in 2001 and melee is constantly evolving in a somewhat rapid speed um like the players who are playing like the top players in 2024 you know they look like they would you know maul any player from like you know 2017 um so that's i'm I'm kind of bringing that perspective in but you know there's enough there's enough team there's enough you know uh viable stuff pokemon wise uh in gen 3 uh that i'm sure you know i'm sure things can be done um if people want to and you know you don't have to like necessarily dig to find you know, this cool thing that no one's ever done before, you know, you might just be building a team and you might have a problem that needs to be solved and you might just need to spend like an extra hour looking through all the Pokemon in OU through BL through maybe even UU to see if there's, you know, any Pokemon that has uh, the particular set of traits that would solve that problem, you know, so. um, So build your own team, still room for creativity. What else? I don't know. That's the main thing. Um, yeah, yeah. Don't be a don't be a a team counter. Don't be counter counter styling or counter teaming against people uh, against people. You need to, you know. Or actually, I'll just I'll be less specific. You know, Pokemon is a tough game. You know, sometimes you get hit with you know your rock slide missing or or whatever. Um, and these things suck, but hopefully you can sleep well knowing that you played your game with some sort of honor and you weren't being a weirdo, you weren't playing lame. So I just hope that, uh, you, know, you know, bring some honor to your game. That's right, guys. <laughs> if your leech seed misses against a boosted lax, 
don't dip out. Don't dip out. You know, we're playing an old generation. You know, <laughs> you know, have some have some fun. Don't be lame. Have some have some honor. Um, if you want to be lame, you know, just be lame. Own up to being lame, but don't be you know, don't be faking like you're not lame. It's okay. It's okay. You know, people, you'll find your lame community. But just like you know, there's a way to have integrity even if you're being lame. Um, so figure that out for yourselves. This has been a fun interview, my man. I appreciate your time. <laughs> Thank you for being here. Yeah, man, I appreciate it. I'm looking forward to peeping some of these other interviews later. And uh, yeah, shouts to shouts to Callus.